Hello, women of the world. My name is Alice Mpofukos. I come to you to speak about female wave of change. I'm part of the wave of change for women. What I'm going to talk about today is about the wave of change that is happening in the world. But first of all, I would like to talk about my background. I was born in Bulawayo in a family of five children, four boys and the only girl is me, the last one. Bulawayo is the second capital of, our, of Zimbabwe. I grew up during the colonial era and uh, my mom was a full-time housewife and she used to have a sewing machine made by Singer where she used to make clothes and sell and just be diverse. My father was a messenger within the National Railways of Zimbabwe, where every time she came, he came home, he would come with a, a sandwich left over from the bosses that he used to work for. And most of them, of course, were white. I'm not here to define anything about my colonialism in Zimbabwe but I'm here to define what it is that has become me through all these aspects of my journey, including my mom, my par my brothers, and my father. So to make it easy, all my four brothers died before the age of 45 years. Different circumstances, somebody is up and going today and the next they're gone. And I was burying each and every one of them for the past 12 years. It was incredibly difficult for me. And then my mom also died at a very young age, 59 years old. So my mom, my dad, my four brothers died within a space of 12 years. And on top of that, I was married and my husband then died within that space of time, leaving me with two children, one who was one and a half years and the other one who was seven years. So that's my background really. And then from there, I went, I worked in, in the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Zimbabwe, in Harare. And then I moved to Belgrade, that was my first posting, ex-Yugoslavia. And I worked there as a diplomat for one and a half years. Different settings, different weather, of course. And different things happened there. So I didn't complete my three years there. I came back within one and a half years. Things that I don't want to discuss with here. But it shows the incredible things that women go to through. And when you see this hashtag me too, you just wonder, when did it start? So when I got back home in Zimbabwe, I was transferred to the vice president's office and worked there for a year. As a civil servant, remember, I wasn't a politician. And then I was posted to Mozambique in Maputo for almost six years where I worked there at the embassy. It was one of the best times that I had and up to now Mozambique sounds like my second home. And then I did win an award there when I had written a piece of work about communicating in diverse communi communities. And uh, incredible, I danced with the president, which was the first time I'd ever been so close to a president, too close for my comfort but it was nice because that's the way they do it in Mozambique. I came back home after six years and uh, continued to work in the foreign ministry. And also in the, on the other hand, I was doing, I was one of the founders of the first Zimbabwe secretary forum and started the Zimbabwe convention for secretaries. It was a way of teaching other women and learning from other women about how to communicate in the diverse world we are living. 
and sharing ideas about things. It was one of the best things also that happened to me in that time because I had so many stories from different women from all over the country. Well, story told, I, how did I end up in the UK? I ended up in the UK just like the three million and above people that left the country due to political and economic reason and sec started seeking refugee in other countries. Zimbabwe is a beautiful country and it's full of spirited people, hardworking people and very intelligent people. So that's why I ended up here. And I, like many others, became a refugee in the UK. I must admit this was a very difficult time for me because I'd left my children back home. And when I applied for a visa, the British government refused to give me the visa for my children to join me. So it was incredibly difficult. But I continued and persisted and they joined me after almost about seven months here. And my youngest daughter, which makes me very tearful, is that she couldn't remember me at the airport. She was four. She couldn't. She was told to run over and come to see mommy, but she couldn't remember me. So my journey started from there and I thought, oh God. One refugee without no hope is too many. And the only way I can escalate anything is to become part of the bed wagon of what was happening. I started volunteering with the refugee support group in Reading, one of the organizations that helped me circle in this country. And at the same time I was working, but it was so much unimaginable, the suffering of people from Kosovo to whatever country you could think of, war-torn places, people who are desperate just to find shelter, just to find food, just to find comfort and feel welcome. And you could hear these stories. I became the man, one of the management committee and later became a chair of that organization. I'm indebted to that organization. I still volunteer quite a lot although I'm no longer part of the management committee. But this helps me to understand and helps me understand why I had to go through what I went through and helps also incredible to build other women to give them confidence in what they're doing. What we all want to do as women is see what we can do we started long ago, 100 years ago, before the vote was accepted, but we still have an incredible journey to go. It does not start with anyone but us women. The voice needs to be attuned to very high. We are not created here on earth not to transmit our light to others. We are created to transmit our light to everyone. Everyone goes through a pain. We are better echoing in a different way and making that the betterment of our future children is much better. And we have to keep on going. We have to have faith, a voice of activation to see a picture of your future. You're never responsible for those that ignore you. But you're irresponsible for your future generation. I am responsible for the future generation my children, the young people that are going through a difficult time. And so we owe it to them to and give them, I won't loosely use the empowerment word, but we owe it to them to make sure that we hear their voice. Their voice is different from ours in so many ways because of internet and other ways of how they communicate through music. So how do we participate to make the female wave of change that we need and that everybody hears us, including the young people. It is to learn their language, to learn how they speak, to give them time to speak, to hear them better and echo what they speak through us. 
as we were in different cultures, in different worlds that we live. We are the only light that they have. And if we keep quiet, it does not build a future for them. When I discovered about refugee life and how you go through a difficult time for somebody who had been a diplomat, had a house, had a good life in Zimbabwe, I must admit, I was unstoppable. I discovered how unstoppable I had. I discovered the passion that I never thought I had. I suffered through cancer, breast cancer. So when you go through pain, you align yourself with things that matter. And that was what mattered for me at this time, to empower other women, to even give them, not empowerment alone, but just to give them a lifeline, something, a belief in something, whether they are seeing it or not, so that they don't lose hope. Yes, I did that with passion. I've done that with so much, taking my time from my children and doing it continuously and being there all the time for those people that needed me. In fact, they didn't need me. I needed them also in another way to heal myself through the emotions that I've gone through. So in a way, we're giving each other something to carry on in our life. And we did, and we still continue to do that. I was fortunate enough to be involved in the Grundig Women's Project, which I met a lot of women in Europe. The suffering that they've gone through as refugees in different countries, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, Wales, and here also in England. I've been speaking in organizations like Amnesty and other women's organization. I was then nominated and given an award by Open University for my work with this community. I was honored to get a master's, an honorable master's. That did not give me wings to fly, but it humbled me enough to know that there's still more work to do in challenging those things that are difficult. As we go into this big era of politics and all that, the rhetoric of refugees that they are swarming Europe, the rhetoric about refugees coming to infest people with diseases, the rhetoric about refugees coming here to be scroungers, the rhetoric about refugees coming here to do things unconceivable of any human being, yet they are just as human as anybody, anybody. All they are just looking for is for a home. And we just need to give them home. And that's all they need, just a home. And then the rest is up to them to get on with their lives. I'll read a poem that has been one of the most incredible poems that I feel, what is it that is called home? I have to wear glasses to read this. My home, the word home indicates a place where a person lives. It is a real place possible with walls and a door, but is the emotion you feel that makes you Place your home. I wanted to, and my real home, a place feel comfortable and be safe. Many people consider their home and other things. There was a time when I thought this was the same. Many people consider family their home, but I lost a lot of family. Do I consider that a home? Everybody lives. Does that make me or us homeless? My home is myself. My body is marked with the journey through my life. It shows my family origins and it also 
my emotions, my mixed emotions. My mind, it holds every memory and it treasures that. My mind, it holds every moment and it treasures that. The existence of every object of importance to me, wherever I will go, whatever I do in the future, I'll be my home. My home is me. This is how we are. This poem really touches me, but I also want to say that I really want to go on in the future and look into young people. I'm currently studying a PhD looking at young people who have immigrated to the UK. And the most important thing is to see how they identify with life. Who are they? Are they asking all those questions? Are their voices being heard? As one of my daughters once said, a person without a soul isn't living. Life is full of a soul. One of them also said, life hasn't always been fair, mom. Sometimes it has to be accepted as it is. And then you find meaning and you move on with those things that happen. I'm going to find some meaning in everything that I've done, my past and my future. But most of all, I'm going to find meaning in what I do passionately about refugees. And I'm writing a book at the moment called Dear God, from your poshed egg breast. Thank you very much. Let's make the wave of change for everybody.